we have the Climate Science Alliance that will be telling us about their project. Um, all right, Diane looks great. All right, whenever you all are ready, we're excited to hear from you and then we'll have you introduce your team uh, afterwards. Dark Wisheki, a place of power and beauty. A silent reminder to Native nations that we must submit to the land, listen to her heartbeat. We land. The land is us. If the earth is out of balance, then we are out of balance. For millennia, Native nations have resiliently restored the land through spiritual practices that communicate and connect us to the land. We will continue to do this until the land no longer exists. The connection to our land has been the key to our resilience. For the Kahuya people, our connections with the land are key to supporting the very existence of our language, culture, traditions, and values. My name is Will Madrigal Jr. and I am Kahuya in Luceno, California, India. Takwasheki is a living monument to the Kahuya people located in the heart of Kahuya homelands in Riverside County. This is a place of power, reflection, and beauty. It is a living entity and a living place. In our Kahuya traditions, we understand the existence of places like Takwasheki and our connection to them through stories and songs, like our California bird songs that tell the story of our creation. These monuments should be respected and protected at all costs. As Will described, landscapes, culture, and communities are all connected. Our work embraces this idea of connection by integrating indigenous perspectives with Western approaches for landscape connectivity planning and climate adaptation. Not long ago, I was asked to review connectivity maps for a conservation planning effort. As the maps were laid out, I noticed a number of large areas were blocked out like you see here in white. When I asked why, I was told that they were tribal lands and the agency didn't have jurisdiction to tell the tribes what to do. To successfully preserve landscape connectivity, we cannot leave these areas blocked out. We need to acknowledge that all lands are tribal lands and we cannot leave any communities out of the planning process. We can no longer afford to approach connectivity as a separate aspect of planning. Our project proposes a new paradigm for landscape connectivity and climate adaptation centered on Southern California tribes that recognizes connectivity is central to everyone's survival and resilience. This new paradigm focuses on the connections between conservation and communities, restoration and resilience, and actionable climate adaptation strategies. Incorporating indigenous values and perspectives can help us reconnect landscape connectivity to other aspects of our society, like community health, well-being, and specifically climate adaptation. This new paradigm is also central to our commitment to amplify indigenous voices and integrate traditional practices, values, and knowledge into conservation planning to support and protect truly connected landscapes. Through this tribally led effort, we are working to decolonize the conservation planning process with tribes as leaders in the paradigm shift, reclaiming the process as well as their role in stewardship of their ancestral lands that lie beyond reservation boundaries. Oh no, sorry. Incorporating indigenous values and perspectives can help us reconnect landscape connectivity to other aspects of our society, well-being and specifically climate adaptation. This new paradigm is also central to our commitment to amplify indigenous voices and integrate traditional practices, values, and knowledge into conservation planning to support and protect truly connected landscapes. Through this tribally led effort, we are working to decolonize the conservation planning process with tribes as leaders in the paradigm shift, reclaiming the process as well as their role in stewardship of their ancestral lands that lie beyond reservation boundaries. This project brings tribal science and approaches to the forefront of landscape planning, integrating tribal priorities, concerns, and cultural considerations, as well as ongoing tribal climate adaptation planning efforts. Specifically, our work relies on a unique inter-tribal collaboration among 20 different tribal nations, coupled with a robust network of collaborators, including land managers, conservation planners, and researchers. 
This proposal represents long-term development of collaborative conservation and climate adaptation work, both research and application, leveraging existing research and catalyzing actions to build a bridge between Western and indigenous perspectives of connectivity and conservation, and breaking away the boundaries and the lines drawn on maps that separate us. This work addresses the needs of multiple tribes and lays a foundation to support tribal climate adapta adaptation efforts that benefit conservation and connectivity goals in tandem with culture, community, health, and wellness. This collaborative effort will employ a model our team has developed for boundary-spanning co-production and outreach, demonstrating truly meaningful engagement and collaboration with Indigenous communities and supporting the integration of traditional and cultural perspectives in conservation act actions. This model focuses on three key outcomes building resilience, building capacity, and building community. To build resilience, we'll expand on a foundation of connectivity research we've developed, assessing the cultural and climate adaptation benefits of preserving connectivity. To build capacity, we'll integrate those benefits into planning as well as on the ground activities. We'll leverage ongoing projects focused on developing resilient restoration strategies to safeguard cultural resources and practices through pilot projects, expanding the scope of these projects to incorporate connectivity. To build community, our intertribal group and non-tribal partners will collaboratively develop and implement these plans and pilot strategies, considering traditional ecological knowledge alongside Western science. This work represents a shift in how we approach not just connectivity, but climate adaptation, collaboration and engagement, and supporting communities of practice. Although such transformative change is challenging, our efforts will advance connectivity and climate adaptation planning while supporting the continued resilience and vibrancy of tribal communities. We look to change the connectivity and conservation paradigm in Southern California and beyond, because together we can build a climate resilient and connected future for all. Ayoy my kayoy my kato erento eret ayoy my kayoy my kato erento eret ayoy my kayoy my kayoy my kato my kayoy my kato Wonderful. Let's give them uh, some appreciation for that amazing presentation. Fantastic. Wow. Another amazing team and presentation and project. Uh, thank you all, Megan and Will and Amber. Would you like to uh, introduce any other members of your team before we take questions? Uh, we have Diane Terry, who was on the back end helping us. Of course, I was the one who forgot to unmute myself. You can only practice these so many times without a, a little faux pas, so thanks for being understanding. Uh, we also have quite a few of our um, team members and our partners who are watching on the other end, too, so we definitely are feeling the love, so thank you. Hey, wonderful. Well, with that, then we go to our three judges. What questions do we have for this team? I'll start. This is Sharon. First of all, I just want to say that all of you are making our job really hard. So we just want to say that. <laughs> I'm curious, I mean, being from California also, and just knowing the importance of value of connecting our tribal nations with our restoration work, what was the catalyst for the initial catalyst for the 20 tribal nations to be a part of this work? Was it because of what you're putting forward today or has that been an evolutionary process? Um, I'd be happy to speak to that. This is um, work that has been built on years and years of relationship building and engagement and trust. Um, the, our tribal work group started, um, the Alliance itself started five years ago and our tribal work group shortly after that with a handful of people that has just continued to grow. So our tribal nations play a very strong role in the leadership of the entire organization plus this work group. But we have been so fortunate to have partners who have supported um, the Alliance and this work group and sort of being a catalyst for helping us give um, that time 
to really engage and to develop this process together. So each of these projects has sort of built on itself um, to get us to where we are today, where this project is completely driven by a vision created by the tribal work group. It's true co-production with our researchers, and it just really reflects an investment of, you know, just true long-term engagement. And, um, you know, it's that feeling that we are in this together and we are breaking down those boundaries and we have a shared vision um, that we are advancing together in that work group. Numbers continue to grow. And I think, you know, having um, Will on this call with us, he serves a really important um, role in um, helping to really make sure that it's not just a separate work group. This is integrated into our DNA as an organization. Um, our inclusion and uh, shared voice and vision that we build together as a community. And I'll just quickly add that I think one of the reasons we've seen so many organizations and tribes come to the table is um, the interest in really building this community of practice that we are stronger when we work together and we have more resources um, and, and folks can really rely on each other and, and really establish that community of practice. Great, another question. Um, yeah, this is Francisco. Um, so my question is, what are some of the challenges that you, uh, you know, uh, expect to face in the project and, and how are you planning to kind of overcome those challenges? I can start with that. I think one of the challenges, um, you know, in terms of uh, establishing projects and, and accomplishing work on the ground, there's a lot to do. So picking and prioritizing will be a challenge because we will always want to do more than is feasible. So, you know, we're going to be very strategic about that. But I think the other aspect, sort of thinking more broadly about expanding this idea and this concept beyond our organization and the immediate partners that we work most directly with is trying to get raise awareness and bring other people to the table in particular in particular um, land use planners who work at local jurisdictions when you speak with them many of them think about working with tribes only when required by regulation when affecting um, cultural resources or doing ground disturbing activities and that is not the only it, type of issues that, that tribes want to be involved in. It's not just about reservation boundaries. All lands in California and the US and beyond are indigenous lands. And so we want to try and raise awareness and really help um, improve the relationships and improve that communication so that those, those planners and jurisdictions better understand that it's not just about those regulatory requ requirements, but about reaching out and having a more collaborative relationship. And we are really pushing this concept that this is a paradigm shift and we recognize that it's really hard and we're really trying to be a model. We're really trying to test and try things on the ground and really show um, through demonstration the, you know, how much stronger we are together than we are alone. And, you know, as Megan mentioned with the jurisdictions in particular is even with, you know, folks who really come with an open heart of like wanting to, to partner, they just sometimes don't know how. And so we're really trying to build these long-term sustained relationships, whether it's between the researchers and, and the stakeholders who use that work in the end, whether it's between entities who want to engage with tribes, whether it's really the tribal, you know, making space for our tribal leaders to step in and lead this work. And so I think that this is, it's a, it's a big commitment, but it's like I said, it's a, it's a commitment that we have all made together. And I don't know, Will, you wanted to mention anything about, um, some of the perspectives from um, on this a little bit around challenges. Yeah, thanks, Amber. Um, just real quick, wanted to add that um, being a member of res reservation community and also a scholar and educator, um, I know that it's been hard for Native nations, uh, sovereign nations, to to find you know organizations like the Climate Science Alliance who are willing to. Um, give agency to native tribes and, and the way that they strategize uh, around the disparities that affect uh, everyone, all of society, uh, but especially um, uh, reservation communities who are cut off all too often from, from the support that they need. So it's, it's really been exciting for me to see uh, the collaboration that uh, the tribal work group under the 
auspices of the Climate Science Alliance has accomplished and done uh, over a very short period of time and moving forward with a vision and a focus to uh, achieve some of these goals that we set for ourselves and that uh, the next seven generations to come will enjoy and will be grateful and, and honor uh, and that in that protecting the land and exercising our, our, our mandate as native people to be uh, the best stewards of the land that we can be. So it's been a great experience and a great uh, effort on behalf of uh, Southern California tribes and the Climate Science Alliance. Wonderful. Chan, any other question? Well, I love the vision for changing the paradigm of landscape connectivity planning. Um, and I'm curious to know whether that involves um, working with people outside of the landscape in, immediately in the, in the region of California that you're working in, but other parts of California or the country where landscape connectivity is taking place um, and how you envision kind of that knowledge exchange or learning taking place um, as part of this. Um, I, the Alliance itself is made up of 340 organizations and agencies that are part of our broader group. So we have a really a quite broad network um, and we are not limited to Southern California. We have projects um, kind of all over the place, including Puerto Rico and Mexico. Um, we have just a really extensive network and our vision has always been about how do we support and promote our partners and then knit these actions together, um, particularly within the Southwestern community. Um, I'm also connected with the Southwest Climate Adaptation Science Center. I work really closely as a partnership coordinator in tribal, in, in tribal um, engagement and, and partnerships with um, others like Althea Walker. So we have a quite extensive network of, of relationships throughout the Southwest as well. And so we see every action that we take, all these projects building on themselves and always having these avenues for um, how we communicate to various audiences and in particular we have every year we host a or every other year we have our southwestern tribal climate change summit which usually brings anywhere from 30 to 70 different tribal nations from around north america um, we also are very involved in the national tribal climate Sum indigenous summit that's happening right now we have a talk right after this so our relationships are really far extending and they're really built out of this sort of long-term kind of trust and heart but we um, we have built ourselves around this ability to communicate to different audiences so we have this uh, very strong process for disseminating climate science and making sure we get it in the hands of the practitioners who need it in in a way that they can use it we build our training around that we also have avenues that we built bring this into the community whether it's to the public with very strong youth program called climate kids and also also a Climate Kids Tribal program, a Climate Kids Mexico program. We have all always at the heart of any kind of research partnership or anything that we're advancing. We're always thinking the 10 steps ahead of how will we translate this so that conservation planners can use it? How are we gonna get it into this form so we can share it through this conference? How are we gonna get it into, we made a really wonderful um, pocket guide of, of climate change impacts um, and 10 things you can do to help wildlife that was in every single library in our county. So we're always, our team is always thinking about that and we, we really rely on this being kind of a, you know, a network of networks and that we're supporting, the, supporting these nodes of, of partnerships so that we can continue to share this because, you know, at the end of the day, we, we tend to sometimes have, feel like we have to compete with each other because we're all after small pockets of money. But in the end, it's not about competition, it's about collaboration. And as we move forward really in resilience, we need to be thinking that way and figure out how we really bring our work together so that we can have a bigger impact together than we have alone. And that's really the spirit we carry into all of our work. Well, I can't imagine ending on a better note than that, um, that we all have greater impact together than alone.